I'm Adam Collins. This is Damien Fleming. This is Crick Buzz Centre Stage at the home of Cricket Lords. We're finally here at Lords for the Australian side. It's been a long time waiting. 25 days to get a game here. Now Australia are playing here on day 27 tomorrow. And suddenly, it's a great position for them to be in. Playing against England. I don't want to call it a free hit. That'd be overstating it. But they come here under decidedly less pressure than England. Yeah. Are we going to debrief England versus Sri Lanka? <laughs> well, we may as well. England, you were pretty ordinary there. And it just raises a few little wobbles. Doesn't it? The, the home nation, you've come in as the favourites, you're expected to score 400 and um, you're not getting near that. Yeah, and it does mean that for England's part, that look, you can't think about other sides in this situation, right? You've just got to control your own destiny. But if they can win tomorrow and Pakistan win against, and rather New Zealand winning against Pakistan, this is all immaterial. Uh, but <laughs> if they don't win tomorrow against Australia and Pakistan do the business, suddenly they're at sudden death at a stage of the tournament, they would not want to be sudden death with New Zealand and India both ahead of them, who are of course going so well at the moment. So suddenly this becomes yeah. a fixture where there's loads on the line. When we last spoke last week at Nottingham, we thought it was going to be a dead rubber, yeah. but far from it. No, it certainly looked that way, didn't it? But that's what I love about World Cups and teams can lift. Uh, there's a lot of expectation, particularly once you're getting into that qualifying stage. Um, so, But for the Aussies, you know, I think they answered a few questions against Bangladesh. Bangladesh are going really well. You know, Kawaja getting runs at three. Um, Stoyness is so important because it gives flexibility, doesn't it? To, you yeah. can play the third semi. You can potentially play two spinners. Yeah. Will we see that? Um, so, you know, a few ticks there. And, um, you know, probably the question marks for the Aussies is just still what's the makeup of the bowling? Yeah, and what Aaron Finch said was instructive. So he yesterday, Imran Tahir and Shadab Khan both spun the ball. And Finch said it spun earlier than he thought, which kind of hints towards maybe we'll see them play two spinners for the first time in the tournament. Maybe they'll consider Nathan Lyon, who's been a you know a consistent member of Australia's sides that have played in England over many years now. He knows Lord's back to front. Well, he does, and um, you know he's the goat. He's the greatest off spinner we've ever had. And and there's a tendency, I suppose, from the media, the perception is, oh, we, we need Gaz. We know he's a great bowler. We've got to get him in. But you know that's really tough. I mean, um, you know, confidence can fluctuate even with the greatest of players, to, um, and it doesn't, regardless of the age. There, I thought um, Sampa bowled. He bowled okay against Bangladesh, but they 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 played him well too. And it looks like he is bowling a few a few more leg spinners. You know, they had that ability to spin the ball both ways. Um, no doubt if this was um, the wicket that was used for the South African yep. uh, and Pakistan, there'd be two spinners, I reckon. Right. But a fresh wicket, um, uh, you know, I reckon they're still, I don't think they're still 100% co- uh, confident in Coulton Isle. Um, I thought his first spell and his last spell against Bangladesh was fantastic. As I keep saying, Colo, I'd like to see him get the new ball. If you're, if you're saying free hit, let's get him the new ball. Let's get him bowling out swingers and getting wickets because once you get through Stark and Collins, uh, sorry, Adam. I Collins. wish it was. <laughs> were you a right unseen bowler or oh, not? You know, not? Not to the same extent that Pat Cummins was. <laughs> Pat Cummins. You know, you can see that, that, that the team start to lift. But imagine if Cummins goes to first change and so you've got a wicket taking bowler in those middle overs. The one of us who did bowl here a lot was this guy. And you used to bowl from this end of the nursery and which does have that slant down that way. And Coulton Isle does move the ball away from the right hander. So with the new ball, it might not be the worst shout. Well, I bowled at this end because Glenn McGrath didn't let me bowl with the breeze. He was very selfish man, Merv Hughes did that for Victoria as well but I think you can still have a look at the at the, um, the slope here guys and certainly for out swingers uh, with the white ball, or oh, any ball really, not only do you get swing humid conditions here, but it goes with the slant, so it would be if Coulton Isle, if, if it's an experiment they're thinking about, I, I reckon they've got to do it tomorrow. Yeah, it's a good day for it as I said off the top it's a day when if Australia were to win it has a far bigger blow on England than the reverse result yeah. for England's part, they don't have Jason Roy his hamstring's been scanned, we, we I understand it's broadly good news, but not good enough for him to play tomorrow. So James Vince will again be opening the batting. Owen Morgan's in a fairly feisty mood. Uh, we, we heard him today get asked about Jason Roy, and he, he was just kind of, you know, I, I wouldn't say that he's the happiest bloke going around right now. All the question about England under pressure and so forth. But what I would say for England is that they don't lose two ODIs in a row very often. Yeah. They haven't since the last Champions Trophy, and Aaron Finch knows that as well. He knows they're going to go after Australia tomorrow, and his response to that is 12 months ago when they got beat 5-0 against England in one day is 
They tried to copy England's game plan, but they're smarter than that now. They know that they can't keep up with England, so they're going to try and beat them uh, with their brains, not their brawn. No, I think you've got to set your standards and others have to follow you. And England have been setting the standards for a couple of years, but there's there's different ways about winning 50-over cricket and World Cups. Um, and we had a bit of fun at England at the start, but I, I really do like their team still. I mean, Roy's a big out. Um, James Vince, you know, what a beautiful cover driver he is. But, you know, for whatever reason, it hasn't quite clicked at international level for him. Um, so without Roy, you know, do they know if Vince can go on and get 100? Mm. Does that unsettle uh, Bearstow? You know, Bearstow and Roy have been fantastic, haven't they, in the last 12 months there? Um, so there's questions, but, you know, deep down, they're really good players. You know, Stokes is just a little bit Warner-like, isn't he? He's yeah. just going, for, you know, he knows he's going well. He's quite reserved and, you know, in, um, you know going out in a methodical way um, but I reckon if the conditions like this Stokes will be a real handful with the ball as well Yeah well two other points to note one is that in Johnny Bairstow's column he's essentially saying don't be hypocrites about booing uh, they booed as uh, Stuart Broad when Darren Lehman told them to in 2013 so lo and behold there will be more conversation about Steve Smith and Warner booing tomorrow yeah. let's not reflect on that let's reflect on Jofra Archer yeah. it'll be the first time that Australia have to play against Jofra Archer in an international tomorrow we know how quickly he's bowling they've never faced him in 50 over cricket tomorrow a completely different story So why didn't he qualify for Australia, he played. No, he's played a couple of years for Hobart yeah. Hurricanes. Does, has, does that yeah. not qualify him? Well, not not quite. Not with the residency requirements of I think it's two hundred and ten days a year for three years over here. He's been in Australia for a very brief fraction of okay, that. Okay, because it just seemed like that England qualification just seemed to slip through nicely for for Mr. Archer. But wow, like watching him bowl. Like he, he ticks just about every box, doesn't he? Like genuine pace. Um, all the bowlology skills, isn't it? Swings the ball, fast, bouncy, good changes of pace. And, and what England needed, you know, a reliable closer. And, and that's what Archer brings to this um, genuine wicket taker. So some really good steady bowlers for, for England, but, but Archer may be that icing on the top of the cake that, uh, cake that makes them win this World Cup. Australia, England, whenever they play, especially at Lords, it's an event, and it certainly will be tomorrow. Crick Bus Centre Stage. Let's hope the rain stays away, and if it does, you'll hear from me, Adam Collins, and him, Damien Fleming, after the game.